Oh no, Godzilla! Why are you destroying this truck full of toothpaste? <laughs> Last week, I was helping my parents clean out their storage room, and in the process of doing that, I found... <sighs> all my old sketchbooks from when I was like five years old all the way up and through art school to when I started working pretty much only digitally. So there's a nice big range of time. And if we look through all these, we can see kind of my artistic evolution. And I thought that would be a kind of fun journey to go through and pretty nostalgic for me, obviously. Plus I looked through a couple of these and there's some great stuff from when I was in animation school for a year. So uh, there might be some good advice that comes to mind while I look through these, so. Uh, Let's crack a couple of these open and see what we got. Okay. Ugh. Gonna see if I can put these in chronological order really quick. Yikes. This is gonna be a good one. <laughs> This stuff is kind of the first generation. I think this is ranging from when I was about five years old up until around eighth grade or so. Don't know how it's gonna be. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, I remember this. My sister and I were obsessed with drawing this guy. It was in like some textbook or something. He was a character that we just referred to as the dude. I don't actually know what, I think he was in a math textbook or something. But yeah, then we got some, some Yu-Gi-Oh stuff here. Oh, look, remember how I mentioned I was really bad at drawing Blue Eyes White Dragon? Well, this, this is how I used to draw him. Look at all that rendering, so detailed. That's more detailed than I would do now. Oh, uh, here we go, more Yu-Gi-Oh. We got some superheroes, some, I don't know who these were. I don't remember them at all. I guess they were healers or something. Cause they got health symbol on their chest. I don't know. But you can see even around age five, I was already pretty obsessed with drawing superheroes. Oh yeah, look at this. I think he's diffusing bombs or something. Okay. Oh, of course, more Spider-Man. Good stuff. All right. Oh, and we got a little, little SpongeBob on the back. I don't know what's in this one. Oh, okay. I guess this was the first page of a comic that I didn't really end up doing. Oh, these were some of my original characters when I was younger. This devil girl who I originally called her Hell's Angel before I knew that, you know, Hell's Angels existed. I thought it was such a clever name Then somebody told me about them. And they told me that a motorcycle gang was gonna come and kill me if I tried to keep that name. So got really scared and changed it to Diamos. <laughs> Looks like this was gonna be another first page of a comic. Oh, another first page of a comic. Oh, another first page of a comic. The kid. Drew that guy all the time when I was younger. He went through a bunch of different designs. One of the designs was a ripoff of somebody else, but we'll get to that when we see it. Oh, look at this. This criminal thinks he's getting away, but escape. Uh, I guess we'll never know. You know what? I used to be so good at proportions. That's how I should proportion all my characters from now on. Oh, we got carnage, more carnage. More carnage. And we got some, oh, that one's, that one's a little bit better. We got a bit of shading going on there. That's not bad. This was another design of the kid. One of the many other designs. This is back when I was starting to practice perspective a little bit. I was learning from comics by Mark Bagley. He was one of my favorite artists. He's still one of my favorite artists. He was my favorite artist back then. Uh, he was drawing Ultimate Spider-Man, which is the first comic I ever really got into. Okay, now this one is gonna be kind of funny because it is the first graphic novel that I ever wrote. And it's, you know, it starts with this family who's moving to a new house and they've got all of the money that they own in the limousine with them. So I guess, you know, I didn't know what a bank was back then. And then there's a car crash, all the money's gone, the kid's family dies, classic superhero stuff. And then I guess I also didn't know what child services was because the kid just ends up homeless on the street. And then immediately after gets his hand cut off by a car, which is pretty grim for my first graphic novel when I was in grade seven. And then he builds a new one out of junk he found in the trash and just happens to find a mystical diamond that he sticks in the hand that makes it work. It's all good stuff. 
I should take this and make a new comic out of it. But anyway, that's the design that I used the most for the kid, which was the character that I used all the time when I was younger. But this design was a total ripoff from a book called like, How to Draw Manga or something like that. Oh, look at all, look at this splash page right here. Good stuff. Also, the team was called the Bounty, and I don't remember why. Like, that doesn't really scream superhero anyway. I like to think I'm a little bit better at drawing hands than that now. Just, you know, just a little bit. There's a lot of these that are just kind of unfinished. Oh, what is... <laughs> what? <laughs> drunk idiots. Ready? Go. It's just a drunk guy jumping out of an airplane, I guess. Okay. Let's move on to something else. I think this one is around the same time period. You can see a lot of these time periods I buy the same kinds of sketchbooks in for a few years. Oh yeah, so you can see I'm getting a little bit better here. This was uh, my take on a Fantastic Four cover that I really liked. I forget who the artist is. I've referenced them recently on the channel, but anyway, I, I loved this piece when I was younger. It was one of my favorite things I'd ever drawn at the time. I didn't really know anatomy back then. Look at this arm too. That is, that is a wonky donkey arm right there. Oh, there we go. That was one of my classic drawings of the kid. Total ripoff. Also, I used to imagine that he was on the Teen Titans. I guess that was like a fan fiction thing I did when I was younger. Also, I was very adamant that he could shoot heat plasma, not fire. I don't remember why. I think I just didn't want him to be a ripoff of the Human Torch. Oh yeah, I used to love drawing mazes. I don't know if there's many of those in these sketchbooks. I used to do them not in sketchbooks, but those were fun. I made them really difficult too. <laughs> Look at those weird four square abs. I should do an episode where I redraw all these characters. You wanna see that? Let me know in the comments. Oh, more venom. See, is he like making a trampoline for himself? What's, what's he doing here? And that looks like that's that. And then this was, you know, that same story that we looked at earlier, but a new version of it. <laughs> Look at this, she's wearing, she's branded. She's wearing a Billabong shirt. Was this sponsored? Anyway. Oh, I think I ripped stuff out of here because I didn't like most of it. And then I liked this drawing and I kept everything after this one in here. I remember loving Fireboy. I don't know if I ever put him in a story or anything, but he was, you know, he obviously looks like a ripoff of, uh, Maybe Hobgoblin or Demo Goblin, Demo Goblin, whatever he's called from the Spider-Man comics. All right, what do we got? Oh, the Crusaders. This was the follow-up version of the bounty. Look at that, we got the kid in there again with another redesign. We got Diamos in there again. And then we got some other characters, that skateboarder guy's back, and that's that. Now, this one, I actually mentioned in a comment on one of Draw With Waffles videos once, and she thought it was funny. Yeah, do you see anything wrong with this, with this uh, sketchbook cover? Critchian Pearson. Yeah, this was the first project, grade nine, that we had to do in art class. We had to put our name in some kind of cool text design on the cover of our sketchbook, and we had to tape it down so that it was permanent, and I spelt my name wrong. Oh, look, I spelt it right there. Oh, this is totally the basement that I was just in a day ago as I was, you know, helping clean some stuff out. Oh yeah, the one year that I played football, I wasn't very good at it. My sport after that became curling. <laughs> yeah, these were definitely projects. These aren't things that I would have just drawn by choice. Uh, this was practicing shading, I'm guessing. This is all stuff that I'd get better at later and didn't really see the point of when I was younger. Jude, now this was a character from a book I was writing when I was in grade nine that was like very kind of rip off of Twilight. It was kind of like Twilight mashed up with Underworld. I definitely want to try redesigning some of these characters. Oh, I kind of, I kind of like this mouth of this werewolf. Ew, this just looks like moldy pizza. Ugh. Oh, what's this? Is this a flip book? Whoa, whoa, this is like an animation or something. Hope that was cool to look at. I guess that animation was just Dory being a pain in the butt or something. 
Now let's get rid of this and move on to the next Aegis stuff. Okay, I think I've got these in the right order now, and my university experience is gonna take a little bit of explaining because basically I finished high school a semester early and I went and worked at a special effects company as an intern because I'd been doing lots of animation stuff. Then I went to school for film production, but after my first year, I got a job as an animator and then I started getting more into animation and drawing. So I started fighting my way into some of the animation and drawing courses. See, since film production and animation were both huge course loads, they really didn't want anybody taking both at the same time. So I really, really had to fight for years to get into the classes that I wanted. And this was just as I was fighting to get into some of those classes. So some of these might've ended up in my portfolio. I also got really into ink drawing for a while. Like I wouldn't even rough a lot of the time. I would just go straight to inks. But you can see I'm starting to play around more with like muscles. I'd gotten better at abs and chest. I was doing a bit better and I had a little bit better understanding of the muscles of the arms and stuff like that. Oh, I'm guessing this was around the time Winter Soldier had just come out or was coming out. You can also see, I used to be really bad at drawing women because I would draw them way too broad shouldered and muscular. I mean, you know, obviously there can be, especially in comic books, some pretty muscular female characters, but I would go too far and do all of my women with really big muscles. And I guess I would do my male characters with too many muscles too. I wasn't really good at not doing muscles because I spent all my time reading comics, but that was something I'd get better at later on. And a lot of this, you can see I would like make people's waists really thin and shoulders broader. I also didn't really have the length of arms down yet or the length of limbs down yet. That was something that I would get way better at when I started taking actual animation classes because you have to draw the characters over and over and over again. And yeah, we'll get more into that later because there's a bunch of those animation drawings in these books. This one I remember trying to do for submitting to get into animation, just a character and a bunch of dynamic poses, obviously doing Spider-Man specifically. And some of these poses I do like, the body proportions are a little bit off and the muscles aren't great, but I like these pose ideas. But yeah, all of these I can like see myself getting better. Anyway. Now this was for, there was a series that I'd just gotten my job as an animator over the summer. So I guess this is between first year and second year. And they had me designing a character for, a, for an animation. It was a political satire kind of thing. I don't want to get into politics, so I won't talk about that. But this was me trying to design a character that I could animate at the time, which I wasn't great at character animation. So I had to make him pretty simple. But yeah, this was something I was getting paid to do. As you can see, I'm still not great at backgrounds at the time. At least I was starting to practice them a little bit. Yeah, a lot of this stuff is concept designs for a comic that I never ended up making. Oh, like we got Diamos back. She's probably one of the most recurring characters in my whole history of, I should, I should draw her again in my modern style. I was actually planning the fourth Multiverse Tales book, which I've mentioned Multiverse Tales before. It's my self-published book series I did years ago. Don't go read any of them. I don't actually know if they're any good, but she was gonna be the star of the fourth book that I never wrote, but I do still kind of want to write a story for her. Oh, look, this was when I was first starting to get into doing thumbnail sketches. And I don't remember who originally encouraged me to do that more. I think it was actually someone on a YouTube tutorial that I watched at the time, which is fitting. All right, so that was before I got into the animation and drawing classes. I think the next stuff is from when I'm actually in them. Also, while I was taking the courses at school, over the summer, I was also taking lots and lots of courses online to get better at drawing. And this is really the time period, these books right here, from when I was getting way better, way faster, because I was just doing courses and courses and courses and drawing. There's so many good ones. I highly recommend you to me, Neil Fontaine. I don't know the guy. He's not like paying me to plug this or anything. I've never met him before, but he's got some really great courses on you to me. I'll link him below. A bunch of the stuff that's in here is practice work I did while taking some of his courses. So this sketchbook kind of covers a few different times. I A bunch of these drawings have like muscles laying into the characters and that is stuff I did after the fact when I got into a course called Drawing for Animation, which was the first animation course they let me in in third year. But most of these drawings are from before that. In second year, I started taking one drawing class that wasn't animation related. But over the summers, I was taking those courses by Neil Fontaine, specifically one on drawing heads. So there's a lot of drawing heads practice and also his anatomy course was really helpful. 
So you can see I've gotten a lot better at anatomy now than I was back then. Also, you can see I did a lot of cross hatching back then. I kind of like this style, not like the build of the character, but this inking drawing style. I might want to try taking this on again. I guess I'm kind of doing that now with my stuff and doing a little bit of cross hatching. You'll see a lot of this stuff is less cartoony than I tend to do now. Like uh, back then I was trying to draw more like Jim Lee or something like that. And I've changed my style since then, but these are pretty cool to look at. We got Diamos again. I was also, there's a bunch of, yeah, I think we're starting to get into it, animal drawings. I took this course on, it was either Skillshare or Udemy. It might be available on both, but it was on drawing animals. And I think it was mostly animal heads or a lot of the classes were animal heads. And I got a lot better at drawing animals from that. I tend to forget that I took that course because it was a shorter one, but that definitely was really helpful. I got a lot better at drawing creatures from practicing, you know, drawing regular animals. Which a lot of these courses, they were kind of boring to take at the time, but I'm really, really glad I took them and grinded through them because I'm definitely reaping the benefits of that now in the art that I do. I can just draw this stuff naturally without thinking about it because I grinded through and did these courses for so long. So I highly recommend if you want to get better, grind through some really boring anatomy courses because it's, it's so helpful. I think there's a lot of stuff in here. So yeah, we've got a lot of muscle work. This was all from that Neil Fontaine course I was taking. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, I remember these. This was, I was trying to design a style for the book series that I was just at this point starting to plan out, but uh, didn't really, didn't end up keeping these designs at all. I remember this is how I used to draw noses. I would do like a little bit of cross hatching under the nose and I really liked it at the time. It works in some places better than others. But yeah, I think that's most of this book covered. This was my Dungeons and Dragons character from second or third year university. Don't remember what his name is. I went through a few different Dungeons and Dragons characters, but I really like this drawing. Oh, this was around the time Daredevil season one was coming out. So whatever the year, year that was. Oh, and then I tried a female Daredevil. I think that was supposed to be Indiana Jones. Oh, and those were more political cartoon drawings. I worked at that same company for all three summers during university working as an animator. It was kind of like, it was animation, motion graphics design, that kind of thing. Same kind of thing that I do professionally now. So this, even here, you can see, I still tended to draw female characters with really broad shoulders. This specifically was a character of mine named Pink, or she went through a few different names. I think, like nowadays, I tend to refer to her as Kate, but, uh, Back then she used to, you can't tell it in this, but she had pink hair. There'll be a few drawings of her in here, but she was like a really buff kind of character. I'm definitely gonna go into her origin at some point on this channel, cause I do still want to write a book about her. But uh, oh, I remember being so in love with this drawing of Daredevil. I just, this was like, I, oh, I, I remember this time period so well because I was getting so much better so fast. I mean, you know, there's still obviously problems. I wasn't great at drawing feet back then. And you can see I made its head too big here. I'm also surprised how much traditional art I still did back then. Cause around this time I did have a drawing tablet. If you're thinking of going to animation school, it's a good idea to watch this part because there are some projects in here that you'll very likely have to do in animation school. So early on, this was learning to draw perspective and draw buildings. Then we had to do some building design. We had to like design the layout for a university campus or something. I don't remember what mine was. These aren't very interesting looking buildings, but you know, I, this is all during the learning process. I think my teacher drew this one. He drew this to be like a building designed kind of like a rose. I don't remember why, but it's kind of cool looking. Oh, then we had to design a bunch of different hats design a bunch of different shoes. These are not well-shaped shoes. This was before he started teaching us how to draw feet. Oh yeah, there's a warning. There's gonna be some like anatomy drawings in this part. So there's probably gonna be some nudity, but you know, it's all hand-drawn nudity, but just warning for anybody that doesn't wanna see that because you do have to do anatomy drawing in university. So there will be naked models. It feels very normal as long as everybody acts normal about it. Oh, and this was learning to draw the kind of understructure bones, but in simpler shapes. And this is still how I tend to think of torsos, except I think of them a little bit more boxy. Oh, we've got pink again, except I was trying out some different styles for faces. Oh, we got a Princess Mononoke doodle there. It's really creepy looking. Some more anatomy practice, anatomy practice. More drawings of pink. Oh, I got some, some big, big headshots here. 
this was gonna be pink, this was Diamos again. That's one thing that I was suggested a lot in university is practicing drawing things really, really big is really helpful. I don't totally remember why, but it definitely was. So don't always use a tiny sketchbook. Try getting some big stuff and doing like big heads and that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, so this was, this was practicing drawing different body shapes and poses and stuff. This was my teacher drawing over my own drawing. This was just like, there would be classes where they would say, okay, draw 10 different body poses. And we'd have to do that, like draw some kind of dynamic-ish interesting poses. Oh, and then this was getting a little bit more into like muscles and anatomy, which I'd taken another course on that already, but doubling up was definitely very helpful. I always struggled drawing knees. I'm better at it now, but it definitely was a tough thing. Ah, yes, and of course, the bane of a lot of artists' existence as they're learning to draw, hands. Hands are definitely always a struggle for me. They're still a struggle for me at times. I mean, they're so, it's like having to draw five different limbs on one body part, and they're usually in different perspectives. It is a very difficult thing to learn how to draw. Then we've got feet again. These ink drawings are my teacher showing me how to do it better. I did feet very flat underneath, like I wasn't good at drawing the underside. I'm still not great at drawing the underside of feet, but you can see him trying to show me how to do it better. I don't remember exactly what the layout for this project was, but this was another project we had to do with like some shading where we had to draw a pose and then draw where it might have been earlier and draw where it might go next or something like that. All right, I'm gonna flip through the next little bit a bit quicker so you can just get some glimpses because I wanna get to the next book as well. Okay, so that's it for that one. I think this next one is less full, but it's got some projects. So this is definitely a project from my last year of university. This is when I was in the drawing graphic novels course. This was one of the projects for that. I had a character kind of walking over text. Like they, they were trying to escape from the brain of the writer because the writer always wrote them into terrible situations. And uh, so all the text that they're running on was the writer talking to them. It was a, a weird out there idea, but it was the kind of class where it was a lot of very artsy people, so I felt like I had to try something a bit different. Some of the stuff I ended up having to rip out because it was things I needed to actually hand in for the class, so some of the good stuff is missing from here. Let this remind you why you once feared the dark. What's that? That's from Hellboy 2. Let this remind you why you once feared the dark. I guess this was Guillermo del Toro inspired or something. Oh, I like these as well. I think this was for a project. I don't know what the project was, but yeah, these are kind of cool looking. Oh, this is a good one. Might not appear so well on camera because it's kind of light, but just practicing face shapes. This one's not so good. You can tell I kind of didn't think about the perspective of the head, how the chin should be kind of down here when you're, you know, your head is leaning forward. Also notice this is when I was starting to get more and more into thumbnail sketches. They are a great idea. Do thumbnail sketches more often. Highly recommend it, will make your art better. Project, oh, this was a test for that other project I was doing, the one where the character's running on the text and whatnot. Ooh, these are more tests for this. I think I like these tests better than the actual finished product. What is this? Oh, I think I was trying to make some kind of like over the top anime type scene about rock, paper, scissors. I remember my teacher wasn't a huge fan of this one, but I kind of liked it. Huh. I guess there's a lot of empty space in this sketchbook. I should use it more. All right, now this stuff was from just after my last year of university when I started working on my book series that, uh, here, one sec, I'll grab the books. So these were the three books. They were a series of illustrated novels. They weren't like full graphic novels. They were novels with illustrations in them. And I haven't gone back to read them. I don't actually know how they turned out, but this is what I spent my first year after university working on. I decided I was gonna self-publish these books and I was gonna be a big, awesome self-published author. And that didn't end up working out. I got a little bit bored of them and I wasn't making any money with them. I still occasionally get some Amazon money from them. Like once a month, I'll get like five or 10 bucks or something from them. But uh, yeah, I am very glad I did them. But a lot of the stuff in here will be me prepping and designing the stuff for these books. So I think this sketchbook, yeah, you can see like this was one of the initial designs for this character. And I think I definitely should have spent more time designing the characters, like actually, you know, going through a bunch of different versions of designs. I was a little bit too quick to jump on one design and stick with it. 
But yeah, if you look back at some of the old stuff on my Instagram, it's all got this style with the really big feet and forearms and it's all like hashtag multiverse tales, which is the name of the book series. And uh, I've changed it since then. I stopped working on multiverse tales. I wanna bring some of those characters back. This is Pink or Kate again, but you know, I didn't do her hair that color. You can see Diemos really has come through all of my work. Like I've been drawing her since I was like, well, was it grade six or something like that? Maybe even earlier? Oh, this was a different design for her. I should redesign her now. Oh, I keep saying that, I will do, oh, look at this, another design for her. So many. Oh, we got a Dr. Doom in that style. Oh man, so many of these sketchbooks are unfinished. Now these were, oh, actually, you know what? This one was from fourth year university where I hadn't really worked out my style yet, but I was trying to do some finished pieces because I didn't do that as much back then. And I, in my free time anyway, for classes I did, but this was me trying to do some more finished pieces. So this was when I was really starting to get like, oh, I'm kind of good at drawing now. And like, I remember being really proud of this one. It felt very Jim Lee, who at the time I was still trying to emulate that sort of style, like the DC comic book house style. And I still like this one. I think this is pretty cool looking. Oh, and I, these were some of my favorite pieces of artwork I'd ever done back when I made them. Like, I was just so proud of these. And I, you know, I, again, I still do kind of like these ones. They're just, you know, I'm, I'm better now. Okay, now this one is probably the latest one in terms of my non-digital sketchbooks. I remember being really happy with a lot of these. Like, I still, like, I still kind of like these. They're more cartoony than I do now, but like, not as well done cartooniness. Anyway, like, you know what I mean. These are still kind of cool looking. These really aren't that long ago. Drew this around Christmas two or three years ago. A lot of this is up on my Instagram and it's like older posts, but oh, we got a Ben 10 drawing. I do want to do a Ben 10 video. I used to be absolutely obsessed with that show when I was younger. Yeah, you can see this is where I'm really starting to get out of my old style. I decided that this was a little bit too kiddish looking for me and I wanted to do something a little bit more comic book and a little bit less cartoon. Yeah, that's up for that, but yeah, I'll flip through these a bit too. This was my favorite of the three books. It was the third one. Each one, it was gonna be like Avengers style. Each one focused on different characters in different universes. And then at the end, they were all gonna come together in an Avengers style story. And the fourth one was gonna be the big team up, but never got to that one. I remember doing some fun, cool creature designs for this one. I kinda wish I'd made it in color, but I wasn't as good at coloring back then. Yeah, we got this guy punching out a shark. This character was very much a ripoff of Luke Cage. Like he's kind of just a really strong, cheerful kind of guy. I don't actually know if this book is good. I should go back and try and read these. I like the art enough in terms of it being my old style, but yeah, I don't know. Oh, and this is, I put in a reference to uh, the Weekly Planet, Mr. Sunday Movies, his goat character. If you don't know Mr. Sunday Movies, he's my personal favorite YouTuber of all time. Go check out his videos. But uh, yeah, that was a reference to that. Yeah, multiverse tales. And that's all my sketchbooks. That's pretty much my art journey. And of course it's still going and most of the art that I do now is for this YouTube channel. So if you wanna see what my stuff looks like now, like right now, just go watch my last few videos. But yeah, I hope you all found this entertaining. I've got a lot of footage to go through. I was recording this for like three hours, but I'm gonna Cut it down so you don't have to watch all the boring stuff. I'll just go to the fun, cool, interesting drawings. But anyway, thank you so much for watching another episode of Popcross Studios. The next episode, we'll be back to drawing stuff. I think the next episode might be the community redraw episode or the episode after that. It, it's soon anyway. So thank you all for watching. I'm Christian Pearson, and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.